What up, ladies and gents? This is going to be the Season 6 PvP Biss List. And we are going to start this video out a little bit differently because I want to address one thing straight away before you guys close the video. If you've learned nothing else from this video, learn this one thing. We run multiple sets. So, before you come asking, Why aren't you spell pen cap? Why have you only got 55 spell pen? Why haven't you got 130? Is 55 enough? We run multiple sets. Right? We have a set with an extra spell pen that we can swap to. Note, when you swap weapon, you will get a global cooldown unless you do it when you're already on global cooldown. So make sure you're already on global cooldown when you swap. And then you can swap back straight away afterwards. You only need to swap when you're fearing. Uh, if you really try hard, you can do it when you're mind controlling as well. But spell pen is removing the shadow resistance. This is what it's removing. It doesn't, doesn't do anything to master spell or dispel or anything like that. These spells are holy school. There is no holy resistance. Spell pen does nothing for them. They won't resist. They will maybe miss, but they won't resist. So the spell penetration is for shadow school. And we're going to be swapping to these this set whenever we want to try and fear to make sure that we don't get a resist due to shadow protection, shadow resistance, aura from paladin, or maybe mage armor from mage, potentially stuff with warlocks. That is the only time you're going to swap to this. Other than that, you're going to run your main set, and you're going to get all this extra spirit. So this is why we're running 55 spell penetration most of the time. I hope this has cleared up any confusion. It seems to be a huge issue for people. So I really wanted to get that out of the way straight away and help you guys understand. So, the gear. Mostly we're going to be running Furious stuff. Damage is going to be really crazy high. Eye level is going to be really high. You must have seen people talking about it. They buffed eye level in Ulduar. They're going to be buffing PvP, weapon eye level, things like that as well. I don't know whether they're going to buff off part eye level. I think it's still a point of contention. We will wait and see. Potentially there are going to be some changes to the bis list down the line if they decide to change stuff. There is a couple of things that I'm not entirely sure about yet. We're going with our best guess currently. And obviously I will keep these pages updated. Obviously I can't update the video, but I'll keep these pages updated as best I can. And if anything does change, your best bet is to just check out the stream and see what I'm up to. Feel free to ask a question if the bis list doesn't coincide with what I seem to be doing. There will be probably a reason for it and I can explain and hopefully it will be clear. So, we're going to start off with the Furious Gladiator's Mooncloth Hood. Nothing special there. Same gems, enchants, the usual. Then we're going to go for the Hit Neck. And the Mooncloth Shoulders with the JC Gemin. And then we're actually going to go for the MP5 Cloak. And the reason for that is we're going to go for a Hit Ring. And the Ring and Neck actually have a lot of Hit combined. So if we go for the Cloak as well, we're going to be quite a bit over cap. So we're going to take advantage of this and go for the MP5 cloak, and we're going to do one gem for hit, which I usually don't like doing, but we're going to do one gem for hit. But I'll show you that a little bit down the line. Mooncloth robe, nothing special here. Same gem, same enchant as last season. Then we're going to be going for the cuffs of salvation, and all off parts will be salvation as before. Nothing really special or, or out of the ordinary there. Then for the mace. We're going to be obviously going for the legendary. Most people won't have access to this. That's completely fine. You can just run the PvP weapon instead. No harm done. The PvP weapon is going to be decent this season. So I wouldn't stress too much about this unless you're a keen PvEer. It's going to take a fair bit of farming and time investment. So it's not... It doesn't give you a benefit in PvP that is corresponding to the amount of effort that it takes to farm it. So really, unless you're a massive tryhard, don't sweat that you don't have it. You'll be completely fine without it as well. The main benefit I see of this is that the shield that it provides is actually magic. So this will help protect your other buffs potentially and obviously circumvent mortal strike. So when you're Chucking out a penance, you're going to get a nice 15% shield on that whole penance that isn't affected by mortal strike. So it's, it's a nice bit of extra healing. I actually think that potentially if you are the target, the PvP weapon will still be better. Due to the potential resilience that you can run on it. I'm going to show you now. So it'll be this one. And you can just chuck a, a resilience gem in that and that's going to give you 60 odd resilience you know that's a lot of resilience from the weapon 
you can pretty much ignore the the socket bonus on this. I think I think the, the resilience gem is going to be superior here. So yeah, again, that's another point of contention where I'm not entirely sure yet what's going to be better for tanking, whether it will be the legendary, how strong it's going to feel, or if it's just going to be the straight up PvP weapon. Obviously, offhand is going to just be reprieve and baton of light for the wand and this is actually really strong this one this season you'll see one minute I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this when we look at the other weapon sets trinket is just the same again 108 Brazil and then the other trinket is going to be spark of hope now this trinket at first glance doesn't look that good but if you take a minute and think we're gonna have a decent amount of haste maybe like 10% this season probably and this is obviously including the enlightenment talent now with that 10 percent haste it's reasonable to assume that in fast-paced games you will be doing approximately three globals per five seconds because your global will be 1.5 or just under 1.5 seconds maybe on average you don't cast every five seconds you take leave some spaces that kind of thing you might get cc'd etc now if you do get cc'd the spirit has more value which is great if you are casting constantly, then the spirit gives you about 30 MP5, we can assume. Now, if we're casting three spells every five seconds, this is going to be about 132 uh, mana reduced off your spells. On average, because we're not including things like talents, which make it a little bit janky. Stuff like absolution makes it a little bit weird uh, and, and reduces the value of it a little bit, but not by, not by a huge amount. But yeah, 132 mana reduced every 5 seconds. So that's essentially 132 MP5 that you are gaining by having this trinket. Uh, and then obviously we add the 30. That's 160 odd MP5. Which is insane. Because the other options are things like this, right? Now, there's definitely value in the spell power of this. But if you look at the actual MP5, if we look at this from a pure regen point of view... This is uh, 272 MP5 for 15 seconds, which is, looks pretty nice, but it has about a 25% 25 uh, 25% uptime. So it's going to be up for about 15 seconds every minute. This is a, you know, a generous, it's a little bit more than a minute, but we'll be generous to say it's, it's up 15 seconds every minute, right? 25% of the time. So if we divide that 272 by four, that's going to give us 68 MP5 on average from this trinket, which is considerably less, considerably less than the show, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, the Spark of Hope, apologies. So the benefit of this trinket is obviously gonna be the spell power, which is really high, right? 158 spell power is really high. And that's where a lot of the value of this trinket is. So this is potentially gonna be useful in some comps, not sure what yet, but any comp where mana is an issue for you, you're gonna be wanting this. This Spark of Hope is going to be really strong. I would say in 2, Spark of Hope for most comps is going to be superior uh, to any other choice. Whereas in 3s, maybe if you're playing something like RMP, you're winning games a lot quicker, you want a little bit more power, the Show of Faith might actually be the superior choice. So picking up both, if you can, obviously, is going to be worth it for sure. But for the... In all intents and purposes, I think the Spark of Hope is slightly easier to get as well. It's going to be dropping from 10 man all the while from Colagon. And it's going to be relatively uncontested by PvE, as I don't think it's used in PvE at all. So this is going to be a really good pick up if you can get it. And, and it's going to be very valuable, I think. To to compare, I believe this is actually even more mana than than Solace. If you cast if you cast every three three casts per five seconds, it's gonna be more mana, mana per five than Solace even, which is insane for this season. Then for rings, we're gonna have the Starshine Circle just because it's it's really high eye level. Uh, the stats on it are insane. Haste MP5, really high spell power. It's got a socket. Can't complain. It's literally the perfect ring. If you can get this, definitely go for it. Then the other ring is going to be the Shimmering Seal, and this is where we're going to be getting the other half of our hit from, or almost half. And there really aren't a lot of hit rings available, so this is probably going to be the best option. It's got Spirit on as well, which we can't complain about, and a socket. So if you can get your hands on this, this is a good pickup. If you can't, 
or you know you don't get it straight away or whatever then you can just continue to use the pvp hit ring until you do i think that's completely fine you will be a little bit short on hit so potentially using the hit cloak until you do pick this up and then you can swap is going to be a good shame then the rest is relatively straightforward we're just going to go the furious gladiator slippers of salvation with the winter grasp gem in it furious legs same gems as this season this is where uh, we're making up the spell pen. We're actually going to be a little bit over capped this season. However, it's not going to be for a while. We're not going to pick up the spell pen weapons for a while. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. And then we're going to be running the Belt of Salvation. Same again. But here we've got the 16 hit rating. This will be just resilience until you pick up this ring. As we just talked about. So you'll swap it out. And then the gloves. Same as this season. Just furious instead of deadly course with the hand mounted pyro rocket as before this is uh pretty irreplaceable i think as, as priest the fact that it's off global cool then is absolutely insane so in terms of weapon swaps not a lot changes we got a different offhand which just has a bunch more spirit on but really compared to the furious it's not that that different it's even a little bit less spell powers pretty much the same spirit you're essentially just trading haste for resilience yeah this is very min maxi i i would i would i would say that this is mainly going to be relevant if it's better to run the resilience mace instead of the legendary mace if you're tanking we'll have to see with that uh, otherwise i wouldn't even bother probably i would just stick with the pvp stuff in case you get targeted and, and don't swap in time or anything like that before stun this is probably not going to be a thing this season if this is irrelevant uh, next we've got obviously the pen set up with the pen offhand and wand and you should already have the deadly stuff from this season which will bring you up to one two nine so you can really make these two items your last purchases you don't really need to prioritize these at all it's very very minor upgrade and then the final set is going to be the spirit one which will be the staff of endless winter with the spirit gems and the spirit enchant and this is going to be for if you literally are not casting you're going you're running around a pillar you're looking for a drink you just want to squeeze out that little bit of extra mana regen while you're not uh proccing the five second rule and this is this is going to achieve that for you the wand as you can see all the way through pretty much except for the pen set has been baton of light and this is because there really isn't any good pve wand available um that is significantly ahead of this this wand it's got it's got good spirit on it it's got good spell power on it it's got good other uh, stats on it as well and on the other ones you're essentially just trading resilience for some crit which really isn't that strong for us there's no real good spirit haste or mp5 haste options available so we're just going to run this all the way through and just simplify everything rather than over complicating it and looking to find you know another drop from pve which could be a pain in the ass so minimizing the actual pve gear that we need it's it's you know if you don't go for the legendary the staff again is min max so you can get something from karazhan uh, sorry from nax that is is relatively similar so even this is not that that big of a deal and the big the big pickups are going to be the two rings and the trinket i would say this season if you can get those Everything else is, is pretty chill. You can just go for PvP items elsewhere. So that was my rundown. Really do keep in mind that this could change as we go forward. And if anyone does have any other suggestions uh, based on current information, please do let me know. I'm happy to hear it. Maybe we can adjust some stuff, min-max a little bit more, that kind of thing. But yeah, this is Abyss List. So hopefully it was useful. Hopefully it makes sense. It's not too crazy this season. We are going to be running a good 1-150 Rizil, at least maybe 1-200 if we swap out the weapon, um, because damage is going to be high. So, stay safe out there, kids. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one.